Got Style Design. My name's Pat. My channel is all about leather. Techniques, supplies, tools, design, applique, braiding, and much more. Since I use fairly sharp and dangerous equipment and tools, this channel is for adults. If you like my video, please push the thumbs up button below and subscribe. Thanks, and let's get on with the video. Today's video is on how to prepare and braid a four strand round braid necklace. This is a necklace that we're going to braid, less the pendant. The necklace in the picture is a six strand, so ours will just be a little bit thinner. Here's a list of the materials that you will need to complete the project. 1 8 inch leather lace, and I'm using Packer Kangaroo. Braiding soap that we made in one of my previous videos. Wax sinew or wax thread. I like the sinew better because it's flat and doesn't take up any space when you're trying to put this in a magnetic clasp. Small pair of scissors large paper clips, magnetic clasp and glue for the clasp, and a rolling board, and I'll show that to you later. In this video, I will be making a 20 inch, four strand, round braided leather necklace. Round braids can take different amounts of lace depending on the thickness, whether it's beveled, width, and if you use a core or not. You can braid an inch or two, unbraid it, and measure how much you used. I added a few inches to each end. Make sure if you are going to tie knots in the end of a braid to leave enough extra lace. We won't need a lot of extra lace since I'll be using a magnetic clasp. You will need to leave enough for rolling the braid. Here are my measurements for the 20 inch finished necklace. You'll double over the lace to go on your snap or clip there is no sense in tying all four ends to something, and it would take more lace, so I double the length so that I can loop the lace through a snap or clip. So I would have two pieces of lace rather than four. The measurements are 20 inches plus 6 inches for an end allowance is 26 inches. 26 inches times 2 is 52 inches. 52 times 1.5, which is what I allowed for a braiding allowance, is 78 inches. So each piece of lace will be 78 inches. 78 plus 78 is 156 inches of total lace needed. If you use a different type of lace, the amount can be a little bit different. I'm using 1 8 inch Packer kangaroo lace. Cut two pieces of leather lace, each 78 inches long. Split your lace if it is uneven in height. Refer to my YouTube splitting video if needed. Bevel the flush side corners so that your braid will lie flat. Refer to my beveling YouTube video if needed. Next, apply braiding soap, making sure it has an even coat sliding through your fingers. You just need enough to make the lace slide. Refer to my YouTube video on how to make braiding soap if that's needed. The first thing we need to do before we actually start braiding is to learn how to make a constrictor knot. That's a seizing knot we're going to use at the end of our braid and it will keep all the strands together while we glue it into the clasp. I'm just going to use a piece of cord so that you can see it easier than the thread. There are two ways to do this. The first is take the cord, take it over your index finger, take it back the other direction, come underneath so you get on the on the left side of that cord. Go underneath here with an awl or something just so you have the the cross is standing up. You'll put the tail end through and you'll come out and tighten it down and you don't want to tighten it down very much on your finger because it is a seizing knot and you won't be able to get it off without <laughs> cutting it off. 
So let's try that one more time. You'll start with it in your hand. You go to the right. You'll go to the left and make that cross. Then you want to come back underneath your starting piece. And then you go up to the cross and you know, use all or something to, or fid, to make that stand up a little bit so that you have room to put your cord in. Oh, not enough room. And there you go. You have now made the seizing knot again. Now, there are the second way to do this is possibly easier if you can remember how to do it. I always forget and have to look it up again. But you'll twist just a little bit and take the left over the right, make a circle. You'll hold on with your finger here. You'll turn this finger over and hold it somewhere in there. It's not terribly important right where. And then you'll push with this finger to make a figure eight. When you have the figure eight, you'll fold the left side over the right side. And there's your seizing knot again. So that one's pretty easy. At least you don't have to go through the, the cross or try and do any of that. So let's, let's try it one more time. You take the left over the right. You hold the tail and the circle. You turn this hand over and grab it with the tail and then you'll come over here. You'll turn it into a, a figure eight. Then you'll fold left over right and there you have the seizing knot again. So what we'll do is we'll use this. We'll put this on here and we'll really crank down on it tightly so that it will hold all these ends together and I'll probably trim these a little bit closer later on. I just did this for a sample piece to show you what we were going to use it for. Okay let's go ahead and start the braid. First we, we've already cut our lace and we need to cut the accessory cord about 52 inches and tie to the ring or clip or paper clip. I'm just using a paper clip and I just tied the cord. It doesn't have to be pretty because it's all gonna come off. It just has to be secured enough so that it won't come apart while you're trying to uh, start braiding. So you loop the two, you've got your, your uh, two long pieces of lace loop through the paper clip or whatever you're using and you'll come over here and you'll have one piece of braid across the other although it really doesn't matter too much because we're going to cut all this off. So you just go ahead and cross the center two just to kind of get started. And then what you want to remember and do is leave your, your cord in the center in the back. You don't want to braid it outside of the, the braid. And at all times the grain side should be facing you on the lace. So I kind of like to keep the cord and this piece over here together so that I don't go on the wrong side. So let's just start by taking the outside top piece and we're going to go ahead, we run around the cord, we're going to push this up through the two pieces on the left. <clears throat> but you'll see that the flesh side is up. So what we want to do is bring it back to the other side and flip it so the grain side is out. So we'll still have two pieces on here on, on each side. Now this is the highest side. So you go 
from this side, push it back with your finger, go behind the cord, come back up through, and you'll turn it over your other piece of lace, so again, that the grain side is out. Then you'll kind of pull just a little bit. It's hard to tighten yet, but you want to keep it snug. This is the high side, and you always start to, to braid with it. You'll push it back under, and you'll come up through those two pieces of lace. You'll fold it back over so you see the grain side, and then you'll tighten this lace, and it's just getting where you can kind of tighten it a little bit now. Okay, the top piece is here. You'll push it under, and you may find a way you'd like doing this better, but I like pushing it back behind. I'm, I'm under the cord, and I'm coming back up through those two pieces on the right and folding it over. So I have the grain showing on all of my pieces. Then I pull to tighten. And again, there's a the top piece. So you'll push it till it goes under and it goes under the cord through these two pieces, but the flush side is there. So you'll fold it over till the grain side is showing on all your pieces. You'll tighten. And it's a little hard to do this when <laughs> keep my fingers out of the way so you guys can see. Anyway, top piece again. You'll push it under. You'll push it up through these two pieces. You'll bring it over, fold it over, and you've gone under the cord. And then you pull to tighten. Okay, top piece again. You'll go under the cord, through the two pieces on the left, fold it over so you have the grain side showing. You want to check the back just to make sure that you don't have any of that cord showing. It, it will if you went on the wrong side and there's no way to fix it. You just have to unbraid the whole thing. <laughs> so top side again. We'll go under. And we'll go between the two pieces. And I let go so it's kind of hard to tell. And fold it back over. Tighten the braid. We'll try one more time. The top piece. Go back under, and you go through these two pieces. Fold it over so the grain side shows, and tighten. Now, I, I know you guys don't want to sit here and watch me do this for however long it takes. And so, um, anyway, we'll just leave it here. and. To, in order to leave it to where we can come back to it and know where our braid was, I use these paper clips. And I just go ahead and clip one on one side, one on the other side. And that way you know right where you were and you can come back to your braiding and you'll be set to go. So if you want to go to dinner, you can do that and you won't lose track of where you are. So go ahead and braid your braid. Um, we were doing a 20 inch necklace and we want to add two inches so that we have enough room to cut this off. We're going to seize this here or wherever looks the best when we get done rolling it. And so we'll get to the other end and then we'll seize that end, and then we'll go on with, with how to finish the necklace. So I'll see you after you get through braiding that, or after I get through the, finishing the braid. 
I finished braiding the necklace last night and I have about um, 22 to 23 inches of braid finished. I did want to mention one tip to when you tighten the braid, tighten in the same direction as what the braid lies and it's over, you know, at an angle on both sides and that will make it so your braid will lie better. Here we are ready to tie off the end of the braid and we have part of it on the paper clip and the other end in my hand. So we need to take this end off with the paper clip and it's probably easier to all get to if we just go ahead and take it off of the paper clip and we can do the constrictor knot a lot easier that way. And we take the, the cord off also, the core. So there's the core. And don't, you know, you don't want to pull on it. Well, it will just come through the other end, but it will compress and wad up the braid if you do that. So we set aside the constrictor knots and have them ready so we can place this first knot over the braid and pull it to the other end and I just look for you know like you wouldn't want to tie it down here where it's loose I look for a place that looks nice up, up here and then I pull the knot down and tie it and and then when you line up the knot on the bottom and then you really crank on it so you can see it's cranked smaller than the braid and even crank on it again and then just make sure I tie a double overhand knot and I tighten it down just as tight and if it leaves a little bit of a lump there we can always hit it with a you know I don't mean smack it but I mean hit it uh, gently with a hammer and then we trim the sinew off and this is the part that's going to go in our clasp so Next, we need to roll the braid, and to start that, I kind of like to um, take a little bit of the braiding soap that we made, not very much, just a little small amount. Don't, don't put tons on here, but I just put a little bit. It'll make the braid lie down a little nicer. And you can see that the braid is a little bit rough, and a little bit lumpy and it's going to be that way no matter you know what you do to it or how good a braider you are uh, until you roll it and we roll just about all kinds of braiding that's that's round anyway and it makes it much smoother and kind of fit together better okay so you're probably wondering what a rolling board is and I made mine, it's just a piece of two by four that's really sanded smooth. Now you can use any kind of board that you want. Whatever you use just needs to be smooth. Okay, we well, are gonna start here where our seizing knot is and we're gonna roll towards this end, which is an open end. And otherwise, our, our braid would have nowhere to expand. Okay, so we're just going to roll it going towards that direction. Pull the lace back. And it's probably better if you do this on something even a little harder than what I have here is my mat. And... We'll look at it 
you can already see it's it's not really rolled enough but it already looks much better than this side does that we haven't rolled you can see how much more uh, lumpy and rough that this end is and this one's looking much smoother and nicer than the other end so let's keep on and we just keep rolling till we get to the very end and then I would I don't have a camera there but I would take it up on my roll my stone my tooling stone and I would roll it some more which I'll probably do um, before I seize this end so I made um, another necklace which I think I'll use for this purpose because I already rolled it and so we'll go ahead and measure what uh, 20 inches from here to the end where we want to put the seizing knot on it. So right there is 20 inches. And now wouldn't you know my knot came apart. So I'll just leave that there. And we'll do a, a little extra knot lesson. Okay, you take the seizing knot, turn it left over right, put your finger there, put your other finger here, push to the back to make a figure eight. Turn it over itself, and there's your knot. And we mainly make them ahead of time because on the other end, you didn't want to maybe let go of your braiding. Okay. So here's the other end that I want to seize. And you really, just like the other end, you really crank down hard on it. Then you do um, a double overhand knot. And you crank down on that pretty hard. So there, our necklace is, is almost finished. So you can see I left some extra hair and the strands are kind of coming apart. We don't want that when we're trying to push it into the magnetic base. Plus you can see a little bit of the seizing knot and we sure don't want that. So the next thing I would do is Cut, first cut this knot off, or this the ends of the knot, the sinew, off. Make sure this is pushed together as good as you can. And then I would take a scalpel or something really sharp and... Uh, cut this end off very close to where we tied it off and you really should do that on, on a different board but uh, I'll go ahead and cut it on here and so it's very very close to the end where that's tied you got to be careful not to push the knot off and then this one where I left a little more on there because I didn't know when I get around to uh, finishing the clasp. You want to cut it off close also. And you probably shouldn't do that on your rolling board, but for once today, it's okay. So now you have both of your seized ends, the necklace is actually complete as far as the braiding goes. And then we want to put it in uh, a magnetic clasp, which has holes in the end where we can put the braid.
okay? And you want to kind of measure where that's, how far that goes up on the braid, like right there. And the reason you want to do that is because when you put the glue around here, you, you don't want to go way out here with the glue. So what I would do in this case is put a little bit of glue, which I don't want to do on camera because I'll make a mess, Take some, put a piece of paper out, put a little glue in the center here. Don't fill it up or anything. Just put some, a little bit in there. Then I'd come back to my cut end and I would put glue up to the mark that you made where it's going to go in the fitting, and, which was right there. And, uh, and then what you want to do is when, when you push, you do them pretty quickly so the glue doesn't dry, you push it on there and then you put it down and you don't touch it for about 24 hours. And if it's, if it's hard to do the other end without moving this, which it would be here, if I tried to do both ends at, at one time, um, then I would leave this one until it was dry, probably a day or at least, you know, 12 hours or something. And then I would do this other one and put it in and let it dry for that long. And the two best types of glue that I found is Beacon Quick Grip. And it's an all-purpose permanent adhesive. And it works probably, it's some of the best that I've found. And it's flexible and paintable also. And then the other one is E6000. It's mostly for... Um, jewelry, uh, I think, and some bead work. So the beaders also use both of these. So anyway, you'll just, you'll just coat this, this, put it in your, in your fitting, and let it dry, and there you go. You have a brand new necklace. Stay tuned for my edge braiding and applique videos next where we'll also use the braiding soap made in my first video and the splitting and beveling technique shown in my other videos. I will try to post new videos every Friday. Subjects will also contain lots of other leather techniques and information. If you like this video, please push the thumbs up button and subscribe button so I'll know that these videos are useful to you. Thanks for watching.